Greetings, dear friends. It's Gospel Broadcast time once again. I'm so glad you tuned in today, and I pray that the Lord has something special to give to you. Just remember this, the Holy Spirit is in you. But until you take in the information concerning what is His business, it'll be hard to hear from Him, because the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you how to buy a car, how to buy a new dress, how to buy a new pair of shoes. The Holy Spirit, by Christ's own words, is in you that He might be able to reveal more of Jesus to you. Wouldn't it be a shame if somebody had Christ living in them and never got to know Christ? Well, there are multitudes of people running around like that today, and you know why? They haven't come to the message yet that Christ lives in human beings. They haven't read Paul's epistles very closely yet. Or if they read them, they changed them immediately because they didn't understand that or didn't want that. So the facts are this is a broadcast that takes the scriptures just like they are. We're studying in Romans chapter 7, and we've reached verse 6. It begins by saying, but. It's sort of an answer to the last verse. The last verse says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now, we're ready to build with but now. But now, we are delivered from the law, being dead wherein we were held. Well, it's not hard to find an answer to that, is it? Whenever Christ came to be our life, we didn't need these outside things to glorify our God anymore. You know how God is most glorified? By you knowing that Christ lives in you. Why is he glorified by that? Because that's his only begotten son. Because that's the one that is co-creator with him in his entire plan. That's because Jesus is coming back to get a group of people who have Christ living in them. No doubt about it. That's what, it's, that's what it's going to be. It is very important that we learn this Christ, that we come to know him in his fullness. And that's Romans 7. It stares you right in the face and tells you all, 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 sorts, of, all sorts of new things. And this line reaches very far. It says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin were by the law. Now, do you understand that? What is it that keeps unbelievers from coming to know Christ as their Savior? What keeps them? Well, this line sort of explains it. When we, which, the motions of sin, that's a part of the law, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our flesh. A simple way to put that is, when a person accepts Jesus as their Savior, their big problem in life is their flesh. That's what has demanded of them to do this, to do that, and that's how they got into sin. That's how they, they wouldn't come to or trust God at all. It's, it's just a marvelous, marvelous thing that people so likely, so likely, when they hear a gospel preached, get mad, get upset. Why? Because the thing that is in them comes from the flesh. If you can cut out the flesh, you'll cut out the sin. Because it begins in the flesh. Something in the flesh, something in your soul and body will manifest itself. And you'll go wrong. You'll go wrong in order to grab it, to get a hold of it, or to live onward. So as we look at this verse, we're seeing something very important. It says, now we are delivered. What do you notice first in that line? It's simple. Grace. Grace. Why? Now is a grace word. Now. Law is a word of humanity. People like the law because there's something in them that say, that just matches me. Well, that's the me that needs to be crucified with Christ. That's the me that doesn't count anymore. That's the me that's not going to get into the Father's house without a change. Changes. Changes into Christ and His glory are simple things. 
God didn't make them difficult. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a sermonizing preacher. You don't have to be a very intelligent individual to be drawn into the fullness of God. Christ in you is your hope of glory. In you, in you. Where did you get him? Did you manufacture him? Did he come because you asked him to come and live in you? No. That's a part of the gift of God. God's gift to every born-again person is Jesus Christ. You understand that? God's gift to every person is the gift of Jesus Christ. For what? Meet their needs? Secondary. Heal the sick? Secondary. Supply financial means? Secondary. Primary, Christ is in the believer that that believer might grow up in that Christ and become a blessing to the Heavenly Father. You understand that? That kind of rips out a lot of your beliefs, doesn't it? Well, a lot of people believe things, odd things, different things, before they get to Paul's epistles. Because Paul is the only man who knows how to live in this dispensation. There's no other gospel for this dispensation. There's no other way to live. All you got to do is open up the book to Paul's epistles and read what is going on in the world, what's going on in life, what's happening to you. It's there because God made it very simple. It is a very simple gospel that I preach unto you. And so that line should be very helpful to us. It says, but now, you don't have to wait for grace to work. You have to wait a long time for law to work. I hardly know of a law church anywhere that doesn't have a, a seminary of some kind for everybody that gets saved in that church. I mean, they have to go through a crucial, crucial, that's my word. They have to go through a crucial understanding of the doctrine of that church, what they believe. Everybody that believes like that is able to answer them by saying, what we believe is what we believe, and if you want to join us, you're going to have to believe. Believe what? Believe whatever that church has laid out for you to accept and to believe. Humanity in religion has a hard time accepting people in their beliefs because they're not tied to the scriptures. And I can imagine why some good preachers won't tie people to the scriptures because they see their Bible changing all the time and the person they're trying to reach probably has already read something in the Bible contrary to what this preacher preaches. You say, well, is that happening? Sure it is. Sure it is. For hundreds of years, people preach at least uh, three or four hundred years, not hundreds of years, three or four hundred years, people took Paul's message. They were smarter. Smarter than the seminarians and the scientific people in our world today. What did they do? They did just what God expected them to do. He expected them to go to the scriptures and listen to the man who controls this dispensation. Peter has nothing to do with this dispensation. Not a one of the other 11 apostles of Jesus Christ have anything to do with this dispensation. Not one person in this world of this world has anything to do with this dispensation. You understand that? Governors, presidents, congressmen, leaders of universities, leaders of great groups of people in whatever they're doing, not a one of them control this business that has to do with God. Not a one of them. Well, most people had rather stay dumb and ignorant. And so they believe what the preacher says. He can give them scripture for what they, what he says. That's, there's, no, there's no problem in getting scripture from somebody that's in religion. Sure, they give you scripture. They, they may believe that uh, some angel gave a man this message and so they're going to carry on from that. That's not the gospel. That's not even the word of God. Or they may believe that we've got our scripture so arranged, rearranged in order that you can see the beginning and the end. All you need to see is Christ. 
All you need to see is Christ. You don't need anything else but Jesus Christ. And when you got saved, God put Christ in you. It's not a question that God is long, for, long way off from you. Not a question that Jesus doesn't care anything about you. He lives in you. He's in your spirit. He's in your soul mind. He is in your flesh. The Holy Spirit is doing so many great and wonderful things in a believer, they don't even recognize it. In fact, most believers that read the Bible say, I just read all the way through the Bible. A glory to me because I read scripture by scripture, every scripture in the Bible. <coughs> and I don't deny them that. But the Holy Spirit is that to give them explanation of God's plan. You can read five-fifths of the Bible and never understand God's plan. But in that little one-fifth of the Bible that's left, including Paul's epistles, you get the full-blown message of what God is doing in this world, of how God, how God is setting aside a group of people by birthing, rebirthing them. They must be born again, was Jesus' first word. You must be born again. Must be church member again? No. Uh, first be a preacher, lover. You love preachers? He's preaching. First be your interpretation of the scripture. Can't get mixed up like that. Born again means that you must be rebirthed by God in spirit. It's a rebirthing. The old is thrown out and the new is taking over. The old is devil's work. The new is Christ's life. He's taken over. Now you don't get a hold of that suddenly. That's why I go from one end of the world to another preaching and teaching the gospel of Paul <coughs> simply because they're not going to hear it anywhere else. They're not going to come to know it any other way. It's all locked up in Paul's epistles. And so I've got to carry on as God has led me. As anybody else who opens this book and reads it word for word would be able to say, I am willingly following Paul as he follows Christ. Does that mean that Paul has become God? No. Does that mean that Paul is bigger than Jesus Christ? No. Is he bigger than the Old Testament saints? No. Then why are you saying follow him? Because he said it. He said it. What's that based on? Follow Paul as he follows Christ. What's that based on? It's based on the fact that it was revealed to him by Jesus Christ. After Christ got back to heaven, a new plan was going into operation. And God revealed to the Apostle Paul what this message was. It's to Paul it's given. Nobody else has it. Not Moses. Not Abraham. Not Jeremiah. Not Daniel. None of them had it. They weren't supposed to get it because God gave it to the Apostle Paul. You see, it's a new start for God. A new start. It's a part of his plan. And with the death of Jesus on the cross, God couldn't, as it were, hold back in his mind he's going to help humanity. With the death of Jesus Christ, he knows that that's what Jesus Christ is doing, helping humanity to come to know God. What better way could they come to know God than having Christ live in them? And what better way could they interpret the Scriptures? What do we learn from the Scriptures? What do the Scriptures have to say about that? It's very simple. 146 times Paul says we're in Christ and you can't be in Christ without Christ being in you. It's a love affair. It's a glorious, wonderful love affair. So you see, some people just don't want to take God's Word. Our line that we're studying says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law. Paul did something there that nobody else in the Bible did. No one else I know of in the Scriptures ever said that the people who continue in law are following their flesh. How could that be? One reason is Peter was still preaching circumcision. 
That's a thing of the flesh. That's a thing of the flesh. And that's the way it is today. People pick out something they like, something Grandma believed and Uncle Joe believed, and they try to put a wrapper around it and make it look better and sound better and give it to the people. How blessed it is to be able to turn to the Word of God, the unchanging Word of God. Let's do it. Let's do it. And let's not be ashamed of the Scripture. Got to go. My time is up. God bless you till next time. Bye-bye.